Shalom. I want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone. Much respect to you, brothers, laboring worldwide in truth and sincerity. Salutations and blessings to the hopeful elect, believing on the words of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. This is the book of Matthew. Chapter 24 and verse 32. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Tonight in France, the fight over who needs to get vaccinated hitting the streets. Demonstrators in Paris pelting police who respond with tear gas and fists. At least three officers were injured. Nearly 20 protesters were arrested. They claim the choice to get vaccinated should be about liberté, freedom. I think our freedom is in danger. I have children, she says. I'm fighting for their future. They're outraged over a new virus pass coming into effect August 9th that would legally restrict entry in most places like restaurants, bars and theaters to the vaccinated and those with a recent negative test. I won't sell my soul to go to the restaurant, the cinema, says this man. There's nothing above freedom. France is battling a frightening new wave. Cases climbed to nearly 24,000 just tonight. A nation fighting the disease, now fighting over civil rights. Matt Bradley, NBC News. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top story. Welcome back to CBS This Morning Saturday. These images are from near the small town of Greenville, California, northeast of Sacramento. They were shot on Tuesday. This is what the same town looks like a few days later, reduced to ash and smoldering ruins from the raging Dixie Fire. The wildfire is just one in a series of extreme weather events from flooding in Germany to wildfires in Greece that have occurred over the past few months. CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli joins us to take a closer look now. Jeff, good morning once again. Good morning, Jeff. You know, I've seen a lot of crazy weather in my career, but I cannot remember a time where there were so many extremes in so many parts of the world simultaneously. And experts say this is just the beginning. Flash floods level thousand-year-old villages in Europe. Entire neighborhoods submerged in China. Raging wildfires incinerate millions of acres across the Mediterranean, Canada, and the Pacific Northwest. That's just a glimpse into what's already the most extreme summer in memory. Columbia University climate scientist Dr. Adam Sobel has made a career out of studying extreme weather. The speed and um, frequency and intensity of extreme events has been startling at times and um, a little more than a little scary. Scary even for a scientist intimately familiar with decade-long predictions of escalating extremes. It feels like the reality is outpacing our expectations. According to the UN, global climate disasters have nearly doubled since the 1980s. And in the US, billion dollar weather disasters have increased by five times. So as we start to go from one degree of warming to two degrees of warming to three degrees of warming, the impacts on extreme weather aren't linear. They increase even faster, don't they? Right, so water vapor, for example, increases exponentially with temperature. And extra moisture means 100-year floods now happen every few years. In July, over 200 people were killed when two months of rain fell in just two days across Western Europe. There's so many people dead. 
A Belgium official described the floods as one of the greatest natural disasters our country has ever known. Earlier this week, monsoon mudslides wiped out a section of Interstate 70 in Colorado. Engineers said it was unlike anything they had ever seen before. A lot of our infrastructure was built for the 20th century. It's a new century, we have a new climate. Are things gonna have to change? Investments in infrastructure are gonna increase or else the infrastructure is just gonna continue to be overwhelmed. Invest is exactly what the $1 trillion infrastructure deal aims to do, with tens of billions targeted to make us resilient to coming climate catastrophes. Speaking of heat, in the Pacific Northwest, an early summer heat wave pushed temperatures to the brink of what's physically possible, killing nearly a thousand people and setting the stage for a fierce fire season. Take the city of Lytton, Canada. They, three days in a row, broke their all-time record highs, 121 degrees. Next day, 90% of the town burns. While we have always expected and predicted worse wildfires as a consequence of warming, how fast and how severely and how persistently it's happened over the last few years has been really uh, shocking and disturbing. The scale of this summer's fires across Canada and the western U.S. are already unprecedented. From above, satellites capture extreme fire behavior. Fires producing their own lightning storms, igniting new fires. And on the other side of the globe, a record-shattering heat wave is fueling massive fires across the Mediterranean. Would it be safe to say that this is not just a new normal for the future, but that that new normal is gonna to continue to shift until we stop warming the planet? Yeah, and I think that's incredibly important. This is a long-term increase, and it's going to keep going as long as we keep emitting carbon dioxide. But for that reason, Sobel says ultimately we are in control of how bad it gets. We're making decisions not just for ourselves, but for generations to come, and what they're going to face is going to be much more extreme than what we're seeing today. Now, while we know that climate change will get worse before it gets better, we now have enough understanding to say with confidence that we can still avoid catastrophe. That's a main theme of the International Climate Science Report, the most important report we've had in several years that is coming out on Monday. What else can we expect from that report? So there are some advances. So the science has advanced, so the language has advanced here. And uh, it's the connection. A lot of it is the connection between climate change and extreme weather, like that crazy Pacific Northwest heat wave we saw, and also a section on tipping points. So what happens if the uh, unfortunate, something like, uh, let's say, an ice sheet were to collapse, what that means to us. There was yeah. also a report that came out this week about the Gulf Stream. Yeah, so this is a big report. So the Gulf Stream basically transports all this heat from the tropics to the poles, and it typically just kind of runs on its own. But now that Greenland is beginning to melt, it's disrupting that whole circulation. Now, we thought just a couple of years ago that if it were to collapse, because it's been slowing for quite a while, if it were to collapse, it would take centuries for it to happen. But this new report says that we're seeing warning signs that it's already becoming very unstable, and there is the chance that it could destabilize and collapse. And if that happens, it throws everything, all the weather patterns completely off kilter. It's a big deal because about a quarter of the heat on Earth is redistributed through that one current in the Atlantic Ocean. And yet you say we still have. We still have time. We, our hands are still on the wheel here, but we're running out of time. We're we running. Really need, it's a big deal. People have to be willing to do something to yeah. make change. Absolutely. All right, Jeff, thank you so much.
Severe heat wave affecting Greece and neighboring countries over the past seven days sparked numerous wildfires, including near capital Athens where more than 10,000 people were forced to evacuate on Tuesday, August 3, 2021. More than 10,000 firefighters battled the flames on the northern outskirts of Athens into Thursday, August 4, where fires destroyed or seriously damaged more than 1,000 homes and businesses. The affected areas include Verum Pompey and Tatoi, located at the foot of Mount Parnitha next to large pine trees forests. According to the AP, the blaze damaged electricity pylons, adding further strain on the electricity network already under pressure due to the widespread use of air conditioning. 81 wildfires have been reported around the country in 24 hours from late Monday, August 2 to late Tuesday, August 3. The fires come during the country's severe heat wave, the worst since 1987, according to local authorities. Defying COVID-19 restrictions on gatherings, anti-government demonstrators faced off with police just 500 meters from the Prime Minister's residence in Bangkok. Police fired tear gas and rubber bullets, but said it was in retaliation to protesters throwing firecrackers and other objects at them. What police uh, have been doing is to strictly follow uh, police uh, measures and police operations based on um, domestic laws and international laws with the uh, international standard. Protesters had gathered around Victory Monument on their bikes earlier on Saturday afternoon. A youth-led protest movement for democracy rose up last year, but lost momentum after an increase in COVID-19 cases and the arrest of several protest leaders. But people are once again protesting, angered by the government's handling of the pandemic. People are out on the street because they are suffering. The government shut down the economy, but we didn't get any kind of compensation from the government. Prime Minister Prayuth must leave right now. The people need a good vaccine. We see people die every day. People have to fend for themselves because the government can't help much. Thailand has been reporting record highs in new infections and deaths this week. Its vaccination campaign has been sluggish. The protesters are also calling for part of the budget for the monarchy and the military to be redirected to fight the coronavirus surge in the country. Florence Louis, Al Jazeera. The dramatic images from this catastrophic fire season in the West. Nearly 100 large fires burning and excessive heat and strong winds not letting up. California's largest, the Dixie Fire, racing across 50,000 more acres in 24 hours, forcing more families to evacuate their homes, destroying the entire Main Street in the historic mountain town of Greenville. The smoke and haze from more than a dozen fires in Northern California could be seen from a satellite 22,000 miles up. ABC's Will Carr is in the fire zone. Tonight, veteran firefighters, battle-weary and exhausted, are calling these extreme conditions the worst they've ever seen. In the West, strong winds and dry brush acting like jet fuel, banning multiple fires. North of Sacramento, the river fire ripping through 1,400 acres in just a matter of hours. So we're all evacuating. Everyone's driving home as fast as they can to get their bag and split. Destroying at least 50 structures, damaging dozens more. This fire burned through this area so quickly it destroyed dozens of homes and left residents with little time to get out. Ron Pucci and his wife losing their home. He tried to stay and fight using a hose and water from his pool but says the fire raced up the hill like a tornado. All of a sudden the wind kicked up, blew embers, smoke right in my eyes and uh, blew the water right back in my face. The next thing I know, there's fire on both sides of me. Further north, the Dixie Fire, now more than 500 square miles in size, tearing through the town of Greenville. Mandatory evacuations were in place for the town's 800 residents, but some decided to stick it out and narrowly escaped when the fire raced through as winds gusted to nearly 40 miles an hour. Everyone, we are all heading out, back out the way we came. Firefighters forced to retreat, embers flying as they make their way through the smoke and flames. Daybreak revealing the destruction. KXTV's Monica Coleman. This is what's left of Main Street in Greenville. Behind me is the Sierra Lodge, and to my right is Way Station Bar. All that's recognizable is the front of the structure. Fire crews say this historic mountain town turned into this apocalyptic hellscape in just a matter of hours. The fire, the largest currently burning in California, may have been sparked by power lines, has been burning now for more than three weeks.
Lindsay, tonight as authorities are trying to figure out how many properties here have been lost, the threat of fire is still very real. Crews are preparing for another night of red flag warnings and high temperatures through the weekend. Lindsay. Those threats just not easing up, Will. Thank you. On the streets of Colombia, violent protests. After the country's president, Ivan Duque, ordered 7,000 military personnel into the heart of an uprising. Disparan, disparan. Esta noche. Duque saying, tonight begins the maximum deployment of military. For a month now, protesters here have faced off with police in riot gear. The violence leaving dozens dead and more than 2,000 injured, according to human rights groups. What started as protests against a proposed tax increase has now escalated to unrest over excessive force amid an already dire economic crisis. The tax reform uh, was an excuse for social mobilization. People have no jobs. They are getting only one or two meals a day. In Bogota, this peaceful protester says, we just want the country to change. Civilians have shut down roadways in protest, causing food and gas shortages. The president saying he will not negotiate until the barricades are removed. But with both sides not backing down, Colombians are preparing for another night of unrest. Vaughn Hilliard, NBC News. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. This is Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 32. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that summer, excuse me, know that it is near even at the doors. And that's what we're seeing. It's near. It's even at the doors. Okay? Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, it is made clear, all right, it's made known, it's speaking, okay? Let's get Isaiah 
chapter 29. Because the Lord is drawing near to the earth which he made. Okay? And these prophecies are actually playing out right before our eyes. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 6. And thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts, yeah, the Lord of armies, Yahweh Bahashavashai, with thunder and with earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. So we are at the end of this thing. What did that guy say about uh, the things that occurred? As far as those weather, it says the multiple things happening at the same time around the world. Well, this is how you know that Yahweh is putting in work. <laughs> you know, Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 6. Even so, the times of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. So these effects and signs are showing forth. The ending is made clear. Matter of fact, real quick. And that's what we're seeing. All right. We're seeing summer is now. Okay. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. See? At the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry, meaning it's not going to be put off. The Lord is long-suffering, but he's allowing these certain things to happen so prophecy can be fulfilled. Okay? And everyone that shall be saved shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. See? So, only ones that's going to escape are the elect of the children of Israel, the ones that have faith and works. Told you how about shall we shall, right? It says, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. See, those certain spirits were sanctified, made holy to Yahweh from the beginning. But again, these effects and these signs, these tokens that are shown, all right, meant to, uh, to give you a gauge, as it were, to where we at in these prophecies, okay? Second Ezra chapter 5 and verse 1. Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, you see, they that's a typo right there. As coming, it says it's supposed to be as concerning the tokens. Behold, the days shall come that they which dwell upon earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden. And the land shall be barren of faith. And we're seeing that occur all over the world. People being taken in a great number. The way of truth, that straight gate, that narrow path is hidden to people. All right. And no, there is no faith at all in the land. You see. But iniquity shall be increased above that which thou now seest. Or that thou hast heard long ago. And that's also playing out. All right, you know, these uh, certain people, as far as, you know, these mass shootings, all right, iniquity increase, okay? It says, and the land that thou now seest to have root, shall thou see wasted suddenly. And that's what's ultimately prepared for America, Babylon the Great. It's going to be an utter desolate wilderness, a wasteland. All right, now let's go here to the book of Luke. All right, 
because we see these things playing out and the Lord said that 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 it's close is even at the doors, right? Luke twenty one and what I want uh you know what? We can start at ten. Luke twenty one and ten. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and we're seeing that also. You know, just Google earthquakes, and it's going to be over a thousand earthquakes that didn't happen this year alone. It says, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, which is coming, and pestilence, which is here, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven you see these certain blood moons these certain eclipse right it says oh uh media showers okay it says but before all these they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Now, this actually happened to the apostles, all right? To the disciples who later became apostles. And it's going to happen again, all right? It says, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall say. Excuse me, what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. I want to jump down. Uh, it's like it. I want to jump. Come on. All right. Jump down to verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity. And we've seen it. All right. Colombia in the uproar. Okay. Uh, Cuba. All right. Uh, who else? Germany. France. All right. Australia. Thailand. These certain things that Yahushua, you know, prophesied about for us to look for. And we're seeing it play out. Along with the, what they want to call extreme weather, but it's just the judgment of Yahweh by Yahushua to bring forth his work. Again, it reads, Luke 21 and 25, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roar. Yeah, these people are in an uproar. All right? Men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Yeah, with those ICBM missiles. All right? And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And all these things, all right, are leading up to the ultimate day of the Lord, all right? The return of Yahweh Bashar Bashar. But it, again, these prophecies are playing out. It's letting us know we are close, all right? Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time, yeah, we know the time. We know the season that we're in. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Yo, take this thing. If you haven't been taking it seriously, all right, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just, I'm going to just say that. It says, and, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness 
and let us put on the armor of light you see so we are we're, we're close all right all these prophecies are playing out okay and we see the judgment of your house by shot happening that's gonna be it for the lesson lord willing has been edifying I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Lord willing, coming at you with another lesson. Till the next time I say, Shalom.